Ladies and gentlemen, we have some huge Tesla stock news that you need to know as soon as possible. In a new update over in China, that's reportedly showing a grayed out full self driving supervised button, which could mean it's launching soon. But how soon is this going to be? Is this going to be before the RoboTax event on October 10th or after? And usually when you see these buttons start to pop up like this, it's usually only just a couple of days. It's just finalizing things within the actual software itself to launch the product or, or service, whatever it has been in the past. So personally, I do think odds are good that we could actually see a launch of FSD in China very soon. The last time there was rumors of this, Tesla stock went up 15% in a single day. That's because launching FSD in China, one could have a higher take rate than the US. That's totally plausible. There's a lot of Teslas over in China, so that's an important part. But it's going to be straight to the bottom line, whether people opt to subscribe to FSD or whether people over in China decide to spend the money up front to buy FSD. It's going to be a big boost to Tesla's profitability with margins in the neighborhood of 80 to 90 percent net. So that means if FSD is eight thousand dollars and Tesla has a 90 percent margin, Tesla's going to take in like seven plus thousand dollars to the bottom line to boost DPS. That's a big deal. It's also being reported that Tesla seems to be setting the stage for an expansion into the Philippines automotive market. This was hinted at by several job listings on Tesla's career website for positions that are based in Manila, Philippines. Three 165 foot flagpoles have now been installed at the entrance of Tesla's Giga Texas factory. An American flag, a Tesla flag, and a Texas flag, which I think is pretty cool. And we can see here that Tesla's semi factory construction progress continues to look good. I mean, there's, there's, you know, parts of what looks like a roof going on or, or something along those lines. It's kind of hard to see if this is the floor or the top. Um, the shadow here would suggest that this is some kind of roofing structure. But yes, there is a lot more work that needs to be done. And unfortunately, construction in the U.S. is not as fast as China. So like the Megapack factory that is almost done now in like a couple of months. Yeah, it, the U.S. construction goes a lot slower, so it's going to take some time to get this factory up and operational. It was also reported yesterday that Tesla produced their 100 millionth 4680 cell across their factories, and they posted an image with Optimus holding up the 100 millionth cell that has been produced. We can also see that FSD 12.5.2.1 is now rolling out for hardware three cars. Now, as I have talked about before, Tesla stock looks ready to break out to the upside. Tesla stock on a technical basis, if you look at the charts, looks absolutely gorgeous. The stock closed above $230 per share. You have the short-term cup and handle formation that Tesla seems to be recognizing and trying to break out to the upside but keep in mind heading into this week for the next two weeks this is going to be the worst two-week period for markets okay this is seasonally the worst two-week period for markets you also have the fed cutting rates on wednesday which that's gonna make things a whole lot weirder which you can see here katie greefield writes on x remember how last week was the s p 500's worst week of 2024 well this week was s p 500's best week of 2024 that was last week of course and now we're heading into the worst seasonal two-week period in the year with an fomc meeting on wednesday and the SPX, the S&P 500, is implying a move of about 96 points, which is almost 1%. This is the biggest FOMC of the year as the Fed prepares to cut, uh, cut funds rates for the first time since 2020. The second half of September is seasonally generally bearish. This is what 
Tom Wright on X. So even though Tesla stock looks great, you are heading into a seasonally bad time in markets. And I think there's a better chance that, than not that we do get a sell the news event in markets around the first Fed cut. One, because last week was so strong. And and two, if the Fed does actually do 50 basis points, there's the good and the bad associated with that. The bad is, historically, when the Fed starts with 50 basis points, they're too late, the, the damage is done, right? And there's basically no bailing out, mar no bailing out the economy. Okay, that's the historical precedent. Like 2001, 2007, markets were red. One, two, three, four years later, after those events, the Fed started both of those cutting cycles with 50 basis points. 1999, 1998, 2019, 1995, the Fed started with 25 basis points. And yes, there was a sell the news event most times after the Fed initially cut rates, but markets were always higher one, two, three, four years later. Besides 1998, four years later, markets were, were, were still down clearly because you had the dot-com bubble. But from that perspective, I think the, the risk is of a downside move for this upcoming week and what could be the rest of September. But in the event we don't see that downside move in markets, I think Tesla stock could go through a aggressive rally. If markets really just determine this is the soft landing, rates are falling, things are gonna be good from here, then Tesla stock could probably rally to the 300s, I would imagine, over the next couple of weeks especially heading into the robo taxi event so this is by far the biggest um week for tesla stock specifically because we also have that robo taxi event on october 10th and if markets are good then i think you could good in the terms of like go going go higher then i do think there's going to be quite a bit of enthusiasm that starts to build for that robo taxi event on october 10th did get some pretty big misses from china's overnight economic data the unemployment rate missed coming in at 5.3 percent versus estimates of 5.2 percent retail sales missed uh, coming in at 2.1% versus 2.5% was the estimate. Industrial production missed, um, coming in at 5.8%. Previous month was 5.9%. The actual was 4.5%. The estimate was 4.7%. And fixed asset investment also missed, coming in at 3.4% versus the estimates of 3.5%. So at some point, you might start to get some weakness in our markets or global markets because of the issues going on, going on over in China. I mean, eventually that could uh, start to negatively impact our economy and make for the soft landing uh, to be a little bit harder to achieve. I'm not sure if we're at that point where we actually start to price this in or, you know, see this reflected in our markets but if china continues to get worse eventually it will impact our markets that's a certainty now with that said starting off tomorrow morning all we have is new york empire state manufacturing index and the nopa crush report none of this is going to move markets generally speaking um and none of this is going to impact the fed's um you know destination of 25 or 50 basis points what will is Tuesday's retail sales. So you're expecting retail sales of 0.2% month over month um, because you're coming off of last month's number at 1%. So there's going to be a revision to <clears throat> down or up, and that's going to affect the um, number that we get. Okay, but we're expecting 0.2%. So if that comes in on the higher side, then markets are going to be steered towards 25 basis points. If this comes in negative or on the low side, then markets are going to be steered more towards 50 basis points. But it won't it won't surprise me if we do have another um, kind of Nikki Leaks article that does come out to solidify either 25 or 50 basis points. It seems like at this point, with that Nikki Leaks article that came out Thursday night, the Fed was trying to steer the markets towards 50 basis points. So we're probably going to get 50 basis points. Um, but if we take a look at the projections from the Fed Funds futures market, they're exactly 50%. 50% 50 for 25, 50% 50 for 50 basis points. 
<laughs> so we'll have to see. I do think 25 basis points may be seen as a more bullish option if the Fed's able to cut slowly because there's not as much economic weakness rather than 50. Now, at the same time, 50 basis points gets the cuts out the way. It, it kind of um, helps the economy out more, which could then prevent a recession more. But in the grand scope of things, at least in the short term, 25 basis points has a better historical context of being bullish. But again, even the last cut we seen from the Fed, um, besides the Rony Rona, was August 1st, 2019, and markets fell 7% within four days. I think you should be prepared for some kind of reaction like that. And if markets go up and Tesla stock does well, then that's just a a, a bonus, right? With that said, Tesla's short interest off free float continues to fall to 2.84%. You have $18.12 billion currently sold short in Tesla stock, totaling 78.85 million shares that are currently sold short. On Friday, you had return shares of 580,000, borrowed shares 431,000. That means on net, you're looking at about 150,000 shares that were actually covered on Friday. And that seems to be a trend of, you know, big money covering on their short positions in Tesla, reducing their short po uh, positioning in Tesla, probably because of the Robotex event coming on October 10th. Now, as far as option activity on Friday, you had 22 different trades totaling $5.9 million with a positive order value of 59%, which was still strong, but not as strong as Thursday. On Thursday, you had 21 different trades totaling $5.88 million with a positive order value of 94%. Sentiment for Tesla is currently neutral at 49. Yesterday, it was bullish at 55. Message volume is low at 34. Yesterday, it was low at 40. And the participation ratio today is high at 57. And as expected, Google Trends data is starting to rise for the Tesla lineup. Following the $0 down do it signing promotion that Tesla started along with the is it like a 2% interest rate that they are offering um, for their products? The Model 3 has jumped from 22 to 24. The Model Y has jumped from 24 to 27. And the Cybertruck has jumped from 54 to 58. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Again, I think this week you probably get a sell the news event upon the first Fed cut. If we sell off, you know, Monday, Tuesday, part of the day, Wednesday, then you may not see that sell the news event upon the first Fed cut. But odds are probably good that we just trade sideways with volatility heading into this upcoming Wednesday. And then you do see a short term negative price action move. And then we can uh, start to recalibrate what this cut means from the Fed, um, what it means for Tesla specifically, because Tesla was at Robotax event on October 10th, you might end up seeing a decent October after all for Tesla. Then again, we have election uncertainty and, and that could become a problem, but it really just depends how Wall Street takes this cut. If they go with the soft landing narrative or if some of that starts to get challenged. I do think retail sales will be important in that aspect because of retail sales coming really bad or really good. You know, that's that's definitely going to kind of tilt people towards that either soft landing or hard landing outcome. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. What is your expectation for Tesla stock in this upcoming week? You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.